Good morning from Yummy B T V. Wishing you all well today. Sending loads of love to you all once again. Um, I've been asked to do this video a bit controversial. Um, high profile ones and the lower end of the scale, so to speak, about what happens to racialist so-called men that go to Her Majesty's Pleasure Prison. Right, I'll start off with, right, way back in the day, there was a geezer who allegedly was meant to be part of the BNP movement, right? Um, he was from Brighton, I think, down in Sussex. He was doing a life sentence. Um, when it all came out, now, he converted to Islam, right? So one of those mornings, while I, whilst I was on the wing with him, um, the, BM, um, the news report on TV was outside the prison talking about a, a, an extreme far right um, BNP member has now converted to Islam and that if um, a far right man can be radicalized in our institutions, but there's no, that means anyone could be susceptible to being radicalized um, by the great faith of Islam, right? Now, what made me laugh is um, when they say that kind of stuff, I always believed, um, with the high profile of being a BMP member, and he came on the wing in the cassettes, this geezer. He wasn't running from nobody, but was it a chess move to convert to Islam, or did he generally fall in love with Allah and the religion? Not for me to say on that particular thing, but I will tell you <laughs> that um, I'd done a couple of um, movements with him, right? Because remember, I was... I was running up and down doing jobs for people by way of violence and that kind of stuff. And I ended up doing a couple of um, bits and pieces with him, right? Now, it could always be said that a man in such a very vulnerable position, um, because a couple of stories I'm going to give you um, later on in this video, where violence is seriously inflicted on so-called racialist men, um, for him to be brave to go on the wing anyway, and a chess move or not to um, go to convert to Islam, right? And take on a, a, the mantle of being a, maybe a hitman um, for the brotherhood in prison. Again, some of it facts, some of it fiction. We won't go into that. Um, but he, 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 he escaped. He, he didn't really get um, troubled too much. But the, so he's, 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 he's probably the only man that I know with such a whole high profile, far right, so they say BMP movement to go on a wing and face the music. The only thing was, is that I heard that when he left um, Whitemore Long Larton and he ended up in Franklin, <laughs> he converted, he didn't, he wasn't um, on the Dean, so to speak, as much as he was when he was surrounded by um, the Brotherhood, if you get what I mean, because Franklin at that stage, um, there was a lot of interracial religion wars going on at that time and for him to drop in at Franklin, um, you would be expected to really get touched up there um, for all the other stuff that was going on in those other category A's, right? Now, the funny one was that I heard that when he went up there, <laughs> I heard that a geezer from Liverpool that we talk about quite a lot on here, we'll say AS, right? Uh, put his arm around him and said to him, "Get, get, you, you take off that gown now." Blah blah blah. You, do, you don't, you don't need to uh, be going. You know, like these are the kind of politics that happen in those category A's, and you know, when big, big other figures um, put their arm around you and, and sway you back. Then obviously, if it did happen that way, I wasn't there. Um, then he couldn't have been as religious as, you know, what, what he was saying he was or what he was showing out or unless he was going through a confused um, period, if you get what I mean. So he, him, him, he, I put as, he went on the wing, faced the music, as far as I know, didn't get touched for the, the years that I saw him in, in the category A's, right? Unless it happened after I left. Maybe some of you shed light on that. But other side of the coin, right? A little young geezer called Nicky. It was in Blunderstone, right? And very, very young. And he had a tattoo with a, a big racialist uh, thing on it. Now, a couple of the older ones, they said to him, listen, mate, you need to not be showing that tattoo because you will get severely dealt with in here. So what he did, they got, he went to the hospital, one thing, and put a bandage over it to try and cover it up. But, you know, gossip in prison, it gets around really, really quickly. And he was in the kitchen 
um, doing his stuff and then, you know, he kept, when he was doing the washing up and that little bits of the tattoo was showing and all that, when he came back on the wing, they completely and utterly annihilated him, right? Uh, to witness such a beating, he put, he got, it's a worse beating that I've got, that on par and probably worse than what I've seen happen to sexual offenders because some sexual offenders um, skate through without getting harmed. It's facts, I'm afraid. There are, there are, there are men that, that have, um, what that talks about is in for rape and rear, 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 and people leave them alone, if you get what I mean. But being, having the racial thing um, involved in your name is probably the worstest thing that you could, that could ever happen um, to you in prison. Um, and you will, you, that you will get severely hurt because everybody will join at the hip. You don't even have secret racists joining in to make it look like that they don't like racists as well. You know exactly what I mean. The other geezer with a big tattoo on his face, like everything on his head and face, fucking walking into, this is in the 80s, right? So it was, it was a bit more different then, if you know what I'm talking about, like where he might have been able to not get as harmed then as he would definitely now if he drops into certain places you get on you'll get annihilated for having those big tattoos and he went in he went in on a geezer who was the bookies um a greek geezer right but he was oldish and he was doing um the gambling the betting and a double bubble burn and biscuits he had his own little canteen room so everybody used to have to go to him so one morning he's gone into the his canteen and called him a, a foreigner and all that kind of stuff and they took a bit of tobacco, took a bit of this, took a bit of that later on in the day. And he's a very imposing figure, tall, 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 like really stand out. And I don't care, I'm racialist, so I'll have it with all of you. One of those type of geezers, right? They went in there in the morning uh, with the bed legs, with the iron bars and absolutely crucified him, right? Four geezers, you know what I mean? I was on the landing at that time but all the bruises and the fingers and all that, and he, he crawled out. I mean, it was a severe, and then metal, bed, um, then metal bed, bed legs. They are very serious, serious, serious weapons, mate, all right? So that was that one. Now, regarding um, the Tommy Morrison thing, right? Now, I, I mean, you know what I mean? I've, I'm not as in depth with that, um, with the, you know, whole history of Tommy Roberts. All I know is what I've heard, what I've seen, and been in certain places around about the same time that he might have been around, but I don't know him, right? So with that, with the thing with Tommy Robinson, what I found is having watched him a couple of times is I often wonder if he was more patriotic and a loyalist and, you know, loved the Queen, etc., etc. The case outside the courtroom with the grooming gangs from North um, was raising awareness in some, in some, in some ways. You know what I mean? Because you can look at it from all kind of different angles. You asked me to comment on that specific bit alone. Didn't really see much harm with that. But the only thing was, he could have he could have ended with them all getting off because of um, disrupting the trial and not good. You know, they could have used that to try and get out of it. It didn't go that way. But his character in general, um, how he was in the younger days, maybe now in later life, I don't, I can't really, he doesn't strike me as completely racialist against, you know, like like what I've seen from others. He's just high profile, goes on marches. I'm not saying the wrong thing here. I'm just looking at based on his character what I saw on um Cullen show and somebody else's. It might have been James English as well. Um, he explains himself on certain things very, very well, but obviously loads more of you would say, no, yeah, I mean, nah, nah, he is his absolute thing. Well, I, I take that on board. Um, but, you know, I, I, I stand by on some things, small little things, like I just mentioned there, I would give I would give him the benefit of the doubt on those things. So unless you've got more knowledge with other things and that kind of stuff, which you you you, you might have in everybody, it's, it's divided up, isn't it, with with him as well? But yeah, I can't really comment too much more on that. I don't want to get myself into trouble. But yeah, that's my my, my opinions of watching him on um, on TV and the way that he comes across. The media haven't really helped. The media make it all all, all the worse. But then if you're going to go on marches. You've got to have to expect that in a country like this, my days, it could, it, you know, some of those marches, I was looking at one this morning on um, Britain's First or something like that, right? Mm. It's really, 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 really imposing, you know, I mean, it's almost like frightening, isn't it? It looks like, um, is it the Ku Klux Klan? It's been America. When I saw them all charging, but I was thinking, but it's like the old days of, of like a football match in the 70s and 80s, but... 
the hatred and the, the, you know, the, the energy coming off the wall. My God, boy. Um, was there one more? Hold on. There was one more, wasn't there? I had one more to tell you about. Damn, him, damn, him, damn him. Um, All right, so we, we leave it. But those are what on one, two sides of the coin where one didn't get touched when I was there, converted, and the two that got them seriously, seriously beatings. Um, not to touch them too much on the high profile stuff. Um, come on, Yami, I'm sure you had one more for them that you might have been. Um, leave it, leave it. 10 minutes is enough, isn't it? All right, we'll use this as a part one. Remind me of some more names, all right? But so it's a quick one this morning. I'm coming up to do a video on Matt Leg um, shortly. Send a lot of love.